One of the most famous examples of artificial rain was during the 2008 Olympics in China. Imagine the excitement of the 2008 Beijing Olympics bubbling up, but there is a twist. Behind the scenes, while everyone was getting pumped for the big events, China wanted to avoid any rain during the opening ceremony so that there would be no problems. They were messing with the clouds and trying to make them do what they wanted. It was like a big, exciting game between humans and nature. People couldn't help but wonder. Could they really control the weather? The stadium where this ceremony was supposed to take place was the Beijing National Stadium. With just one day left until the event, the Chinese government came up with a solution that would bring rain and ensure that the stadium and Beijing's roads wouldn't wet. So to avoid this issue, the Chinese government decided on cloud seeding, and on the day of the event, when dense clouds were moving towards Beijing, they were forced to rain outside the city. As a result, by the time of the event, the sky had completely cleared up. Have you ever wondered how to stop rain on a certain day in a specific area? Well, it turns out you can with a bit of planning. Here's the trick, a few days before the big day, you start cloud seeding in the surrounding area. That means you encourage the clouds to rain earlier than planned. By the time your special day arrives, the clouds are all rained out, leaving you with clear skies and no rain. Many ski resorts in the USA use cloud seeding to ensure sufficient snowfall because ski resorts need reliable snowfall for people to ski. If there is no snow, the resort will shut down. So they use cloud seeding to artificially produce snow. Ladies and gentlemen, cloud seeding is a technology that can be used to bring rain to any part of the world. To understand how this technology works and how humans have gained the power to induce rain anywhere at any time, it is necessary to first understand how rain occurs. The most important factor in rain is the sun. When the sun heats the surface of the ocean, rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water evaporate and turn into vapor, rising into the atmosphere. As the vapor rises into the atmosphere, it cools down and condenses back into water. Tiny droplets of water merge together to form clouds. But the droplets in the clouds do not merge with each other because these droplets are in their purest form of water. However, when these droplets encounter dust particles or smoke particles, they merge with each other to form larger droplets. Due to the Earth's gravity, they eventually start to fall to the ground, which we call rain. But how is rain made through cloud seeding? It is about 1946. Vincent Joseph Schaefer was an American chemist and meteorologist who researched aircraft and ice precipitation. He used a cold box that was quite cold in one of his research studies. As you know, in cold weather, when you breathe out, it looks like steam is coming from your mouth. That's actually tiny water droplets from your breath. This is similar to what happens in clouds. Dr. Skeffer observed this too. He put dry ice, solid carbon dioxide used for cooling, in a cold box and breathed out into it. His breath turned into ice crystals. This shows that when it gets really cold, water vapor turns into ice quickly. He realized that this phenomenon could also be applied in real life. In 1946, Dr. Sheffer conducted his test on a cloud near Greylock Mountain. He dumped dry ice into the target cloud from a plane. And the results were amazing. That suddenly it was raining. And from here, the invention of cloud seeding took place. But did you know there was another scientist, Bernard Vonnegut, besides Dr. Schaefer, working on cloud seeding? But he had a different approach. Instead of using dry ice to cool clouds for seeding, he wanted to use chemicals. His idea was simple, he focused on water condensation. He experimented with chemicals like silver and iodide. He found that silver iodide is great for attracting water vapor. 
So, silver iodide is sprayed onto clouds. It helps tiny droplets in clouds stick together, getting heavy enough to fall as rain. This is not just any rain, though. It's artificial rain or cloud seeding. After that, the process of cloud seeding gradually improved. Recently, a new technology called cloud zapping has emerged for cloud seeding. Drones zap clouds with electric current, helping small droplets merge more efficiently. If you are worried that it may rain on the day of your wedding and you have millions to stop the rain, a company in France offers cloud seeding services. They will cloud seed and ensure that it will not rain on your wedding day. Now let's talk about Dubai. Did you know how hard each drop of drinking water is collected in Dubai? Dubai faces a challenge in sourcing drinking water due to minimal rainfall and salty seas. To overcome this, it uses advanced desalination plants to make seawater drinkable. However, this process is costly and energy intensive. To cut expenses, Dubai employs cloud seeding. Collecting rainwater in a dam in the Sahaja Mountains. This water not only provides drinking water but also generates electricity, all at a lower cost than traditional desalination. What do you think will be the harmful impact of cloud seeding? The answer is that Every technology has its ups and downs, and cloud seeding is no exception. While some worry about its long-term effects on the weather, studies done so far on cloud seeding have shown no lasting harm to the environment, health, or ecosystems. However, there are still concerns about potential environmental impacts, weather manipulation, legal issues, and relying too much on this technology. I hope you liked this video. Leave your thoughts and questions below. To watch more amazing videos, please subscribe to our channel and be a part of shaping our future content. Let's continue this journey together. See you in the next amazing video.